Here we have an individual who is lifting a very heavy object a certain distance using only his teeth, and we are asked to determine how much work this individual did on the object. There are a couple of ways to approach this question, but one way would be to first draw a free body diagram that shows the forces that are acting on the object. This is a relatively straightforward free body diagram. We have the pulling force exerted on the object directed upward. We might just want to call that F. And then we have the gravitational force that's pulling down on the object, which of course is MG. And that's it. That's the free body diagram. And I think one thing we have to assume in this question is that the object's being lifted at a constant speed. The question doesn't really note that, but we can imagine that he's pulling very slowly on this object and it's just moving along at a constant speed. So with that assumption, we can then turn over here to the work equation. And the work equation tells us that the work is equal to the force times the cosine of an angle times a distance. Now, let's talk about that angle here. You look at part A and it asks how much work did the individual do on the object? Now, the force that that individual is exerting is this force right here. And we can see that that force is directed upward. Furthermore, since the object is being lifted upward, we know that the displacement of the object would be directed upward as well. So focus your attention on those two vectors. You have the upward force and the upward displacement, and then ask yourself, what's the angle between those two vectors? Well, basically those vectors superimpose on top of one another, so the angle between them is simply zero degrees. So whenever you're computing a work, you have to be very careful about the angle. In this case, it's zero degrees because it's always the angle between the force asked about in the question and the displacement. And again, that angle is zero. Now, the cosine of zero degrees happens to equal one. So this equation will actually simplify to just work equals the force exerted by the individual times the distance that the object travels. Now, we have the distance, we just need to convert that into meters, but we don't yet have the force. So let's talk about that next. Now, recall that we assumed that this object is moving at a nice constant speed as it's being lifted. And the fact that it's moving at a constant speed would mean that the acceleration is zero meters per second squared. So with that in mind, we could apply Newton's second law in the y direction. We know the sum of the forces in the y direction would equal the mass of the object times the acceleration in the y direction. Looking at our free body diagram, we have those two forces. We have the upward positive force F and then the downward force Mg. Because Mg is downward, we have to say minus Mg. And then this would equal the mass times the acceleration, which we just said was zero. So in fact, the equation for Newton's second law simplifies. It's just F minus Mg equals zero. And finally, if we add mg on both sides, we can see that the force that is exerted by the individual is equal to the gravitational force. They're equal in terms of their magnitude. So in fact, we can go back up to the work equation and plug in mg for that force that the individual is exerting. So this becomes mgd. And then we just have to plug in the known values. The mass of the object was given as that value right there. So we'll punch that in. The standard unit is kilograms, so that's perfectly acceptable. The gravitational constant on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to kind of run out of room here. And then we're going to multiply that by the distance the object was lifted. Now, that's given in centimeters, so what you want to do is take 17.1, or whatever other distance you have in your problem, and then multiply that by 10 to the minus 2. That converts it from centimeters into meters. So, we'll pick up our calculator. And we'll punch this in, and when we do so, we have a work of about 472. And the standard unit of work is joules. So this is how much work is done, and that's the answer to part A. Luckily, part B is going to be easy. They say, what magnitude force did he, the individual, exert? We already computed that, or at least determined the expression for it. We said that the force that the individual is exerting was just mg. So all we have to do is take the 281 and a half kilograms and multiply that by the gravitational constant. That's going to give us the answer to part B. 
And when we do that, we get about 2,760 newtons. So that would be the correct answer to part B. And if your homework system requests kilonewtons, we recall that one kilonewton is 10 to the power of three newtons. So you'd have to do a little conversion at the end here. Take your newtons and then multiply by that conversion factor. Put the kilonewtons in the numerator and the newtons in the denominator. That way the newtons would cancel. So you're basically dividing your 2760 by a 10 to the three. And when you do that, you end up with 2.76. That would now be in kilonewtons. So that's an equivalently correct answer to part B.